Hello there. Uh, I need to take it easy for a little bit here. So I thought it might be fun to take a look at one of my vintage computer catalogs. And this one in particular is somewhat special to me because this is part of HP's line of their custom computers. Um, this is part of the System 80 line here, and I believe this is part of the HP 9000 line. And Everything in this is just a little bit different than most computers you would have seen during this time period. So I thought it might be fun to take a look at it. Now, this catalog is from February 1983. Um, it's not tremendously long. It's only 29 pages and not even all of them have images. But this is from my absolute favorite time period for HP. I am in love with their HP Series 80 stuff, um, and I have a number of things that go in that line of computers, and I have a handful of HP things off to the side that I'm going to bring on to here to uh, demonstrate some things as we go through this. So I thought that this might be a fun look through this HP computer users catalog. <laughs> Now, before we get too far into this, let me just turn to a random page here. Uh, there are no prices in this catalog, and that's because HP during this time period was producing things that fall into that category of, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Um, the 16500C logic analysis mainframe thing that I did a video a while ago on um, kind of falls into this category. I can't find an actual price for how much that thing would have cost. I'm guessing the base unit may have cost about $20,000, and the way that I have it configured now might be closer to $30,000. Uh, so this stuff would not have been for the average enthusiast of the day but there are some more humble things in here like we can see an HP 12c down here so this is going to be an interesting mix of extremely high-end and somewhat common things so let's start off by taking a look at this cover because I love the look of this um, so we have an HP 9000 system there I believe um, with the truncated 10 keyless keyboard kind of funny uh plotter here that would be color that is impressive that means that the pens are swappable and we can see some of them right there with the accessories an hp 86 which is a computer that i looked at a long time ago uh with one of its floppy drives we have a floppy disk box some of the documentation for the hp 87 there which is a computer i desperately want that is super cool um, some printer accessories, including a replacement print head for an impact printer. I talked about how in the uh, image writer video I did that these were intended to be replaceable and user serviceable. So there's an example of one right there. Um, we have some three and a half inch floppy disks, which are kind of interesting, as we'll see later in this magazine. Um, a roll of... Uh, thermal paper, which we'll also take another look at later, an HP 41C, which is a calculator I do not have that I would love to try and get into, but those are out of my realm, but even more so. The HP 75, which we'll see more of later, is it's very prominently featured. On the back here, uh, we can see some of the stuff that was somewhat unique to HP during this time period. So their software came in these large plastic binders, and I actually have some of these. Um, they're not holding up well right now. They're falling apart. The plastic's all aging and cracking. Um, but it was really interesting because they're designed to either hold floppy disks or tape, and <laughs> they had to be really big to hold the tapes, so they're just kind of funny. But yeah, that's uh, what we have going on there. Oh, it's HP... 120 it looks like so that might be part of their pc line i'm not sure interesting so uh this may not include the 9000 series i don't actually know when that started um so that's good to know but uh let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at what we've got going on inside and immediately we have a huge plotter banner oh that is that is pretty. HP was famous for their plotters. Um, I have two. I have one that I don't remember the uh, model name number for because it's really uh, unique and I can't find a lot of information about it. I was sent it a long time ago um, and I've tried to research it multiple times. It is a mainframe plotter. It's meant to use custom serial commands 
um, and it's meant to be much faster. I don't know how to interface with it, and I haven't had much luck trying to get it going. So uh, one of these days, I'm going to get back to that knitting, and it's going to be amazing. Um, I also have a large format HP plotter uh, that supports RS-232, I believe LPT, but HPIB as well, and uh, one of these days when I have all the space in the world, I'm definitely going to be getting that thing going. Um, the pens are mostly interchangeable between these plotters, so uh, I do need to find some of those because none of my plotters have pens, unfortunately. Okay, so getting into this, uh, where you're starting out in the handheld calculators and computers section. So again, there are no prices on these things, which is kind of unfortunate because it would have been funny to gawk at that. Um, but we do have some cool things going on here. So the 41C and the HP uh, 75 here, they're both HP products, um, are part of the, um, I think it's the IL module family. Uh, yeah, HPIL module family. So they had these little, uh, little cards that you could plug into. They're probably just ROMs uh, that plug into these devices. So the 41 is just a calculator. It's meant to be used like that. But the 75 is a full-on computer. I would love to get one of those, but they're super expensive. And then we see a 12C, which lets me bring in my first prop here, uh, an HP 12C. So I've actually done a whole video about this calculator. It is fantastic um reverse polish notation programmable the only downsides to this one are that it is a uh, financial calculator so some of the functions it has are specific to that now i'd actually mentioned in the video i did on one of these that i wanted to get a later model one and this one finally is as we can see by the url there um i have since realized that there are not as many people trying to modify these as I thought, and the development tools for them are really not that easy to use, so I wasn't able to do as much with one of these as I hoped. However, thanks to the generosity of one of my viewers, I was sent the calculator that I really wanted anyway, an HP 11C. So I have a huge shout out and thank you to Anna and I believe Kurt here uh, for sending this HP 11C. Um, this is fantastic. Um, I, this is just so awesome to have now um, because this thing is everything you want in an HP calculator. This is wonderful. Um, I have played around with this a bunch and this thing is great. Uh, it's really not all that different from the 12C. Um, the most significant difference there is the coloration. Um, this is a newer 12C, but it's not that much different. It is gold for the financial industry, whereas the scientific version is silver. Uh, if you want to know more about using one of these, uh, I'll link the video I have about it in the description, but that is super duper cool. Um, and that is a dream calculator there for me. So moving on here, uh, we had some other calculators here. So, oh, look, a th HP 38. That would be this one. <laughs> um, I don't have a battery in this at the moment. Um, it takes two, and I've done a video about uh, getting it working with standard double A's, and the battery door has gone on a walkabout. I will have to look at where I was storing this to find that. I found it really quickly while editing. I've been intentionally keeping it loose on here because some of the uh, HP plastics from this time period are not known to uh, live long. I turn the page here. Uh, we get into some of their other calculators and the one that really more exemplifies the problems are the uh, bifold calculator lines like this one. It looks like they don't have a 28 here, actually. Um, the thing about these, uh, as far as the broken plastic goes, is the battery door here. So this, uh, these take a really weird battery that I had to buy. Um, but the plastic uh, here along this is known to crack and break and the amount of force that these batteries whoops put on the battery door is really high and will break them uh, so i also have a non-c28 that i uh, don't keep batteries in because it exerts even more pressure on the door than this one does this one seems to be not as bad um, so i'm leaving the batteries in there for right now I do use this one on occasion, so uh, that's also why I leave the batteries in there. But yeah, so this is um, 
this is a whole other level of calculator. This thing's pretty crazy. Um, I'm still not 100% sure how to use this one, um, but it is fairly similar to the uh, other RPN calculators. Um, so I'm going to drop some of the stack here. It's, uh, it's, it, it holds a lot. Now the 28C here is a lot more complicated than the uh, 38 or the uh, Voyager series here. Um, it has a visible stack. So if I enter five, enter, uh, we can see five show up. But then if we do two, enter, uh, we could still see five and it will show you three at once. And then you can actually also uh, go up and see more if you want you can move around and things but uh we don't need to do that right now so since this is still rpn i can hit plus and then that'll add the two and then i can plus and plus here and i'll move all of those up uh then we can do two and then times and then we'll see 28 so this thing's really cool but it's got like a whole lot of stuff going on uh one of these days i really need to sit down and research this um but yeah that's another one okay um going on here so we have some more stuff related to the 41 and the il modules um but yeah there's not much more to take a look at there moving on we have this wonderful business shot of a important businessman on a plane doing business things with the other business guy look at jealous at his awesome hp 71 or 75 um yeah I'm, I'm i'm that guy right now i'm jealous that's really cool uh, over here, we have an HP 86. Now, <laughs> this is the computer that got me into the uh, Series 80 line, and I didn't know what I was getting into when I bought it. Uh, thankfully, it was extremely complete, and it is just amazing. Um, I love that computer. Uh, I have since acquired, I don't know if it's going to, yeah, it will show it later, um, more systems, uh, well, at least one more. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's great that one doesn't have a lot going on there um now this is kind of cool so the hp 85 which is actually in the next shot and oh man that dust cover we're getting i ah, will just skip ahead here um the hp 85 has a tape drive built in and it uses these tapes um now i have an hp 85 and uh, I've been wanting to do something with it. It works fully, but the problem is the tape drive. Now, these tapes um, have two things going on. One, the metal flake on them apparently will start to fall off if you try and use this. So I have not put one of these in my tape drive and tried it yet because I'm afraid of them being just trashed. Actually, is that a hole? That might be an alignment hole. I haven't tried this because the there is a, a cap stand inside the tape drive that just liquefies and becomes super lumpy, and it needs to push up against this to uh, advance the tape, I believe. I'm not 100% sure how it works. Um, Curious Mark has a video series about trying to repair the tape drive and also convert it over to using these types of tapes, um, which I have bought a few of and i thought i was going to try and do this i'm i'm still thinking about it uh the problem is while they are actually the same kind of tape uh the other ones are taller so um i forget what these are um quick 80 tapes that's it so the hp tapes are basically the exact same thing it's just that they are uh shorter so the tape isn't as wide um two ooh, that one feels a little better i can see the tape actually advancing with that um but not yeah that one's not working that's weird um huh strange i can actually move the tape back and forth with the cap stand there so maybe the tapes really aren't that great um anyway yeah i've been trying to decide how i want to uh do that i was thinking you could 3d print a part and put it in the top of the cap stand and then put uh shrink tubing or uh what was the other thing i was thinking of uh plasti dipping the cap stand to try and rubber coat it to make it grab this and move the tape but i don't know now so uh yeah um that's a thing but uh, back here one more really quick this is hilarious so you're likely familiar with 
floppy boxes. I don't have an HP branded one, but I do have a Terra 80 one here. So there is a door that opens up and you can flip through the floppy disk and see things. Um, this is really cool. <laughs> this is a three and a half inch disk holder. Here we go, demonstrate this. Uh, you can put a three and a half inch disk inside of a fly five and a quarter inch floppy disk holder. That is hilarious. Um, this probably came with like an AOL thing. I don't know, but it's weird. I just leave it in here because uh, it came with the box when I bought it. Um, but this is pretty common. However, I've never seen one, <laughs> something shaped like that for tapes. And that is just hilarious. Um, although I would probably go for this really awesome little rack um, for the tapes. That thing is just gorgeous. Look at that. That thing is hilarious. Um, another thing here is the thermal paper. Um, and that's for the HP 85 because it also has a printer integrated. And uh, my HP 85 did come with thermal paper, thankfully, um, because it is kind of a weird size. And that size is uh, four and a quarter inch. And it looks like this if you buy a uh, new roll. So we can see here uh, 29 54A and this is 2954A. Um, this is the actual paper refill for an HP 85. I will probably never open this. It's far more interesting as a uh, historical note to see it intact like this than it is usable as paper for the HP 85 because you can just cut a roll of fax paper in half and put that in there and it'll work. So I can replicate this easily, but this was just too cool to pass up on so yeah i have an unopened roll of thermal paper for the 85 um moving on here um there was something else i wanted to mention oh just these those are amazing man i'd love that this is not vinyl so many uh covers for computers during this time period were vinyl and they've contracted over time they've shrunk and they don't fit as well or the corners have torn around the keyboard they just don't look good anymore they've yellowed and i have a number of things that are that that PVC texture, and then they've started to liquefy for some reason. They're really unpleasant to touch and have ruined things that they've been on for a while. So a fabric one like that just sounds awesome. I would wish I had that. Uh, there are a number of weird non-computer things in this that I actually wish I had. Um, so that is that is chief among them. Um, also awesome is this HP 85 case. Now, I think I've actually seen one of these for sale, or at least something similar to this, on each eBay um because i have a running hp 80 search just to see what shows up um it's kind of cool now the hp 80 uh series is kind of interesting this picture really showcases it here um because he uses these plug-in cartridges now this is a rom drawer so uh you plug this in to add new features to your hp series 80's kernel um so this is actually the same one that i was using for my 86 that i had four uh, ROMs in, but those HP 86 ROMs are not compatible with the 85 because this is a 40 column display and the 86 is an 80 column display. Now that you can really tell there, but you can see that display is much larger than this one. So I actually had to get a uh, different uh, ROM for this to make it work with the 85 uh, because I have a GPIB cartridge and I wanted to try that out and it did actually work. I got that working. Uh, but these were used for a lot of stuff. So we can see one here, the HP uh, CPM system. And that is actually this, um, which is much bigger and heavier. Now I do have a memory expansion, one of these, I think it's a 64K uh, card actually. And, but <laughs> this one has a Z80 in it. Um, I haven't opened it to verify that, but I'm pretty sure it does. And it's essentially an entire CPM computer on a card, and then it just uses the uh, HP system as input and output. And it is hilarious. The HP 86 I got came with this, and it came with a bunch of disks that were either Series 80 formatted or CPM formatted. They are not compatible. <laughs> And it is just funny because you put it in this one card and then the CPU is in here, not in the computer. These have a custom Capricorn CPU. Uh, they're very different. They run in kilohertz, not megahertz. They're super slow, but they have high IOPS. So they are actually uh, pretty good. These computers are basically glorified calculators. They, they really uh, don't do a whole lot. Um, they don't have... I mean, they do have graphics, um, but the graphics are more like um, using a plotter on the display. Matter of fact, you can send the graphics straight to a plotter. The whole thing is amazingly laid out. I'll link my HP 86 video 
um, because it's just incredible. The whole computer, I love it. Uh, okay, so this is kind of funny. Um, every single HP manual has a specific part number, and you can look these up to try and find these things if people have scanned them. So, for example, here is the manual for the HP 86, and its part number is uh, 86-90014. So let me see if I can find this one. Oh, that's super weird. It goes 85, and then, oh, okay, here we go. Barely any, yep, right there. Introduction to the HP 86, 85. 90014. Oh, 86900. No, nope, that's. Ah, I think they have the part number wrong in here. That is hilarious because this is obviously the real deal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's kind of funny. So, anyway, when you're searching for HP Series 80 documentation, uh, it's really helpful to try and look. For these numbers, because almost nothing has copied these numbers, they're very unique. Um, so it makes it super easy to find exactly what you're looking for. Um, so I've referenced this multiple times when trying to look up things, like the manual for the CPM system, for example, is very strange. So yeah, uh, let's move along here. Um, all right, so that HP, I guess 120 is what this was? Um, we're, yeah, series 100, okay. I'm not that familiar with the 100 series. Um, does it talk about the actual computer here somewhere? No, it just goes series 80 to series 100. Okay, so I really wish I knew more about this system, but I don't. I'm wondering if it's just maybe a desktop equivalent to the series 80? I don't know. But anyway, uh, this is getting into some of the stuff that I really like uh, that exists for these types of things. So here we have an HP acrylic stand that you can put the computer on because it just wasn't tall enough already with that huge base and then the disk drives. Um, disk with a C? Weird. Now, this page. <laughs> this is really cool. Um, that HP 100 there, all right, using three and a half inch disks in 1983. That's really early. So it uses weird three and a half inch discs. Now, if I remember correctly, these are, um, I think first gen three and a half inch discs. Um, I think this whole changed uh, another time. So a normal three and a half inch floppy disks has a square hole, all right? Um, the other thing here is that some of these super early ones, um, you had to manually slide that open. So. The way that they're holding that tells me that it might be a manual slide disc. Now, in a floppy disk like this, there's actually a spring right there, uh, and that pushes the slide back. The first generations of these did not have that, um, and I'm suspecting that's what that is. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of funny. I believe these are compatible. Um, the shape is generally the same. Um, I think even down to all the weird little things. It doesn't seem to have that notch there, but yeah, it's just really cool um, to see those really early floppy disks in print like that. Um, and then we have a floppy disk care kit. <laughs> it makes it look like so much work to use a floppy disk drive. I mean, yeah, you do need to actually take care of this stuff. I have a cleaning kit right here. I don't remember if I have everything in here. Yeah, bear, there we go. That's... Uh, one of the more important things, I think my sleeve for that is kind of stuffed in there somewhere, but you'd have a, a cleaning disc like this that you put in basically an empty floppy disk, and then this is a rough material um, that's meant to ablate clean the head. Um, <laughs> it's so funny to see this really big kit. Um, this one is a verbatim brand. Uh, let's see if I can flip this over, and it's really just... A really small package so <laughs> that whole huge thing to clean your discs is hilarious um now i am a little jealous of these amazing artwork boxes here i do have a box of hp discs um that i use with my series 80 um and uh trs 80 stuff uh when because these were some of the first five and a quarter inch uh double density discs i had access to but uh, i'm not sure if these are the same uh, model number here, box of 10 8 inch discs. Whoa, what did what are they selling that uses 8 inch discs in here? I don't think anything is. 
That is weird. Okay. Um, 92190A, 92190A. So, yeah, this is actually the same uh, product that you would get here. So, this is probably just a newer version of the same thing. So, it, <laughs> but, oh, man, I really wish I had that awesome warm colored one. Although, this box isn't bad either. Here we have, uh, <laughs> these are, I always... These are hilarious. So here we have a sound dampening mat for an impact printer and then a sound dampening box. This is a whole box that you put the printer in to just try and quiet it down. <laughs> These printers are noisy, um, as you see at the end of all of my videos. Uh, <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Uh, this is something that I've been after for a while, but we can skip over to the next page to see it. I remember this is a stand for an HP printer. Now, I actually have something very similar to this. I think I've shown it in some videos. Um, I haven't featured it, but th I really want this thing. I don't know how to explain this other than that I want that um, a lot. I've had a running eBay search for years now to try and find one, but these acrylic printer stands I think are just so pretty. They work so well with it, and some printers like this um, need a stand, or at least benefit from it, because they will have a slot underneath of the printer to bottom feed the paper up into the printer, and giving you the stand like that makes it a super clean setup. Uh, this HP printer is based off of an Epson FX or MX80, I don't I don't remember which it is, but it, so it is not going to take advantage of that. Um, but it is still super cool. Yeah, so this actual image here is meant to uh advertise their furniture because you could buy hp furniture to go with your uh computers <laughs> very specific um ibm and trs80 both did this uh the uh, the other ones uh they they incorporated the hardware more into it so i know for sure uh for the trs80 model 2 for example you could get a desk with floppy drives built into the desk but that's because they were eight inch discs so uh you know the drives are a little bit larger and more inconvenient but yeah that's hilarious um i would really really like to get a uh a computer desk that's from a brand either hp ibm trs80 i don't care i just kind of want one i have an um and i've shown it in a video an ibm xt style um cart <laughs> that i can put an ibm pc on i don't have the space for it anymore so i've it taken apart and put it in storage um but i really like that thing it's so cool it's very clearly built just for that system um but yeah really awesome i want a uh, actual computer brand desk just because that would be fun so, uh, this is the end here, um, and we could just see all of the cables that they uh, use. Now, HP is uh, pretty famous for introducing HPIB here, or IEEE 488 as it would become to known and more colloquially known as GPIB, um, which is a bus that allows you to connect things it's similar to RS-232 or Parallel, um, but it uses chainable connectors so these connectors are double-sided so you can plug one cable into the device and the other cable into this uh the commodore pet used it which was kind of cool um i don't know if the disk drives are i don't, I don't know how they work i bet you could interface with a commodore pet disk drive from an hp um using that but you'd have to know the exact commands to send to send and read data so it's kind of a a weird thing. Um, I have a couple of GPIB cards for a PC that are ISA slots that I need to try out. Uh, now that I have that test bench system put together, I really need to try that. Uh, this is hilarious. I love these little cards. There's one in the front and in the back. Uh, and they're both still in here. It's easy to purchase products in this catalog. Just call. You, you can't like send a check because you don't know how much it is. <laughs> So I was like, yeah, of course this isn't ripped out or anything. and It's not actually perforated, and you're not going to cut. What, are you going to cut it out and then have the phone number in your wallet with this huge card? I mean, <laughs> it's just kind of weird. really wish there were prices in this, but oh well. But yeah, that pretty much uh, sums this up. I imagine that this would have been... Th th this Okay, so I find this interesting. It's blank space. This would have been an address, so this would have been mailed. All right, you would have put an address label here, but it wasn't, which tells me somebody got this in person. So was there an HP dealer? 
that somebody went to and got this catalog from? Is it the person who bought all of the HP uh, 86 stuff I have? I mean, like, this probably wasn't cheap, the CPM cartridge. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, very interesting. But I, I, ho I hope you guys enjoyed this look through here, because that is it. Uh, <laughs> I really, really like having this catalog, because there is not a lot out there for the HP Series 80 stuff, and I really like looking through this and seeing all of the things and how HP advertised them. Like, this this HP 86 image in here, I just gotta stop and talk about that again here. So, what, what are they doing here? They're doing drafting. Oh, I didn't see the drafting. Okay, that's actually a pretty good use for that computer. Um, here it looks like they're printing sales reports. Oh, how exciting. Um, here they're doing science. Look at the flasks and the pressure vessel. Um, it's okay, so those two are definitely the intended use cases for those computers, um, especially drafting. It was probably phenomenal for that. Um, but with the... Uh, the uh, interface modules here. This was an amazing lab computer. That's why I really want one and uh, enjoy it so much because it can interface with all of the instruments that HP released. Um, most of the manuals here, I guess not this one. Uh, talk about interfacing these things with uh, external, yeah, connecting peripherals. So you can connect all sorts of things to these and do direct data manipulation back and forth. They're just wonderful computers. The HP IL, I think there's an IL to GPIB. Yeah, HP IL, HPIB interface for the uh, 71, 75. Um, that would be so cool. Um, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> this really is a, a wish list catalog for me, and it's just kind of funny. Well, I hope you guys enjoy this look at to this uh, HP catalog that's uh, from a very different classification of computers these are really awesome i'm so glad i have this thing <laughs> it's just it's really fun to look at um but yeah that's it for now it is only 29 pages of mystery and wonder but uh yeah if you enjoyed this video you might want to subscribe um i've definitely covered uh almost everything i have that's in this catalog i need to do a video on my hp 85 still so that'll be uh coming up at some point i gotta decide how i want to do the tape stuff though but uh eventually i'll figure that out uh, if you want to support the channel i am on patreon but for now that's it and i'll see you next time Thank you.